with this beautiful hadith of hope. On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call out to the angels to say to them, call for this person and they will call you by your name, by your name. And the angel will say, Fulan ibn Fulan, so-and-so son of so-and-so, come. This hadith is sahih, it's in Tirmidhi, it's also part of it is in Muslim, part of it is in Bukhari. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather all its different parts and its different narrations and put it in one story for you. So I don't want people to come and say, where is this full hadith? It's not a full hadith, I'm bringing all the sahih hadith and putting them together to make this story for you. The angels will call out, so-and-so, son of so-and-so, come to a judgment from your Lord, and you will be called. The believer will be called. And then Rasul said, the light of Allah begins to encompass this person until the angels no longer see you. So you're hidden from their eyes. You ready to hear the end of this story? Yes? So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to call this person to come closer. Rasul sallallahu says that Allah will say, Abdi udnu minni, come closer. So you come closer, you come closer, you come closer. Rasul sallallahu said, Allah will speak to him, وَلَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ تُرْجُمَانِ There is no interpreter between you and Allah. He will understand what Allah is saying to you. And there will only be a veil between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah will say to you, Abdi, my servant. Do you remember when you did such and such of a bad deed in secret and no one else saw you except me? And he will say, yes, Ya Rabbi, I do remember. Didn't you know that there will be a God, Allah, me, your Lord, who will judge you today? He will say, yes, Ya Rabbi. Didn't you know that I will punish? Yes, Ya Rabbi. Weren't you aware that I was watching you? Don't you respect me? Don't you respect your life? And he starts to say this to this person until the person says, Ya Rabbi, please, for you to throw me into hellfire, it's better than to you question me like this. Please just throw me into hellfire. I'm done. I'm done. It's over. Then Allah says, wait, what about this bad deed? So he brings up a greater bad deed. What about this in secret? I haven't finished with you yet. When you did this, didn't you know a Lord is watching you? Didn't you know this? And he repeats the same thing over and over, reprimanding him until the person says, Ya Rabbi, please, please throw me into hellfire. I'm ready. Wallahi, I cannot face you. Then Allah says, wait, what about this deed? He brings up a greater deed. When you did it in secret, how dare you do even that? Even worse, even worse. And he continues to do that. And the person says, Ya Rabbi, throw me into hellfire. Throw me into hellfire. Throw me into hellfire. Until finally the person says, I have no chance of entering paradise. Is this what Allah called me for? To tell me this. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, My servant. And he, the interpretation of it is, Why did you keep it a secret? As if Allah is saying that. And the servant said, says, I was shy, embarrassed of you, my Lord. I never exposed this sin to anyone. I was embarrassed of it. I felt guilty about it. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him or her, Abdi, didn't you realize something? I kept it a secret, covered in the former life. If I wanted to, I could have exposed you, but I didn't. Don't you give that a bit of thought? سَتَرْتُوهَا عَلَيْكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْيَوْمَ أَسْتُرُوهَا عَلَيْكَ I kept it a secret in a former life, and today I will also keep it a secret between you and me. No angel will know about it. Your records will not have it, they're erased. And only you and I will ever know this. Then Allah reminds you of a good deed that you've ever done. He starts off with the smallest one. And then he goes to the second bigger one, and bigger, and greater, until finally, you receive your book in the right, and you exit out saying to everyone, ha! No one cares, you know? No one really cares. Everybody's worried about themselves. But you know, when someone's excited, you just shout and scream anyway. Ha! Umu qra'u kitab! You don't want to read it? Well, I don't care. Ha! Umu qra'u kitab! Look what's in my record. Everybody's looking in misery, and you're saying, I'm... And you're singing along. You know, imagine someone skipping along and saying, I'm going to Jen, I'm going to Jen, like that. <laughs> so he's skipping around, doesn't care who he is, them, doesn't hear them, they're just happy and singing. Reminds me of a romantic film. <laughs> you know, romantic films when they're in love. Yeah, and they sing around, everybody thinks, oh, shush up, you're crazy. I'm just happy, I don't care what you think. So you're going to Jannah happily like that, ready to meet your beautiful spouse in Jannah, insha'Allah ta'ala, men or women, ready to enjoy 
and ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see his face subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَيْسَ كَمِتْلِهِ شَيْءٍ There is nothing like unto him, but we say that Allah will reveal himself in a manner that we cannot understand in this world. You will see your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala as it is stated in the Qur'an, وَجُوهَ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ نَاظِرَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا نَاظِرَ On that day faces will be brightened with light looking at their Lord. And in the hadith of Bukhari, you will see your Lord without any problems whatsoever. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deeds. Ramadan is coming, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who do not backbite. And if we do, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist us in stopping this bad habit. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who do their actions in the best of our intentions. And I ask Allah to save us from our bad desires in the shaytan. I thank you for having me. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا أسأل الله فقدنس وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله